I'm Chris Kitcher. I'm um, a lecturer in electrical installation at Central Sussex College. I've worked in teaching since 1996. Um, I started work as an electrician when I was uh, 15 and I've been in the electrical industry all my life. Still really enjoy teaching electrics, still really enjoy learning about electrical work because you never know everything, no matter how much you think you know, it's quite an involved subject. So it fascinates me and um, I'm sure it fascinates a lot of other people as well. Well, I've rewritten two calculations books twice and I've written a book on inspection and testing but it's now on its second edition. I think anybody an electrician really needs to take a step back and, and understand that you should be trying to learn everything at once. Rather than learning to do things parrot fashion, it's a far better idea to try and understand why you're doing it rather than just getting on and doing it. So the first tip would be just to take your time and try and understand what's going on. Second tip would be to try and put yourself with a company that has got the time to train you properly and put yourself with somebody who really knows what they're doing and, and has got time to explain exactly what's going on. And then, of course, the third tip would be that, you know, you need to study. You, you can't learn all of this stuff in five minutes. So as much studying as you possibly can. And, and although it seems uninteresting, once you begin to get involved in it, it becomes more interesting. So, you know, three, I think they're three good tips. Certainly struggle with the maths. I didn't go to college when I left school. I went straight on the tools and, and really didn't go to college until I was sort of 40. So the maths was quite alien to me. So the maths was the hardest part. To help my learning, I, I always use textbooks and I still even use them now. You never know everything, so there's always something you can learn off of somebody else, even a different way of presenting things. So I think textbooks, to most people, are vital. But you need a mixture, you know, you need a mixture of textbooks and you need a mixture of practical work to see how the stuff in the textbook fits. We've had a lot of changes just recently, uh, you know, we've had Part P, which is a new building regulation, which has come into play. Um, it's upset some people in the industry a bit because it's not, uh, people begin to think they're electricians after only a week's training, which isn't quite right. It's not something you could possibly do. We've had a lot of changes in the regulations as well. There's been a new edition of, of the wiring regulations, BS 7671. So again, that's a big change. Everybody has to come back in and retrain because there's an awful lot of new information in there. Without a doubt, the key changes will be towards renewable energy, I think. Photovoltaic, solar, um, ground heat pump, air pumps, microgeneration, every one of those has got an element of electrics within it. So I think we'll find not only electricians have to move that way, a lot of the people that are involved in those types of, of construction are going to have to come in and do a little training on electrics as well. I think we've got to adapt, you know, my, <laughs> renewable energy um, photovoltaic, it's all very, very new and, and not many of us know much about it. So there's an element of retraining involved for us as well. Well, at the moment, renewable energy is quite expensive. But of course, like anything else, legislation drives it forward. And, you know, the new building regulations are certainly going to have an element of renewable energy which must be installed in, in new houses because that's the way the government's driving it. So, you know, it's going to be legislation driven. And also there, there's a lot of people out there that are interested in this stuff, you know, and, and there are grants available for people that carry out the work properly. 
So, yeah, it's the way forward, I'm sure. And I know if I was younger, that would be the route I'd be taking. When I wrote the books, I wrote them in a way that I thought I'd like to learn. Now, that's obviously not going to suit everybody, but I've tried to put it in English that people can understand, not used too much jargon, and just put in the books the things that people would need to know. Well, the benefits really is, is that there are questions and answers. So the benefits for the books, all of the books really, there's, there's examples in all of the books. There's questions, there's answers, and there's methods to go about finding the answers. So, you know, they're the benefits really. Plus the fact they're very small and they can be put in a bag or a van or, you know, and, and referenced whenever you feel like you need to. You've not always got a laptop or a computer with you when you want to reference something, and particularly if you're in construction, you could be out on site. And most people do do things properly, but a lot of us need a bit of reassurance sometimes. So if you get stuck, it's quite nice to go to a van, get a book out and, and read it. Also with studying, it's far more comfortable to sit down in an armchair with your feet up and flick page to page rather than sit fixed in front of a computer. So personally, I find reading easier from a book than I ever would a computer. Mm.